All right, thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. So, as Dr. Oberly said, I am Stephen Bresson, and for my thesis, I tried to understand carbon cycling in the food forest and carbon farm here at New College. To my thesis set out to really understand this carbon cycle. So the element carbon forms the basis of all known life forms. And as you can see in the figure, it undergoes very complex exchanges involving the air, living organisms like trees or animals, and being trapped in the soil. Only organisms that photosynthesize, like trees, are able to take carbon dioxide out of the atmospheric carbon pool and store it in their tissues or in the soil. Carbon that's stored in the soil lasts there for the longest time. It can be trapped in the soil for many decades after it is after it is stored there. In contrast, in tissue like leaves, it is only trapped there for a couple months before it's released into the atmosphere. This has become quite a big issue lately, as in the last 200 years or so, humans have released a large amount of carbon dioxide from the soil in the form of coal and other fossil fuels into the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, these higher concentrations of carbon dioxide gas have had a greenhouse effect, trapping more energy in the atmosphere around the Earth. In the atmosphere, this energy has led to changes in climate patterns as well as a slight increase in global temperatures. This has already had catastrophic effects in various places throughout the world and these effects are expected to worsen in the future if the amount of carbon dioxide continues to increase. So, finding ways to gather carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it in the soil where it will be trapped for many decades has become a major focus of different research. The food forest at New College plays into this idea of sustainability in the long term by interacting with the carbon cycle. The food forest is based around a framework known as permaculture, which emphasizes planning ahead for the future and creating systems that will last for many generations, storing valuable resources like water, carbon, and food production locally, and embracing whole systems thinking and having a holistic approach to management. In an agricultural area, this holistic approach teaches us that soil quality is the driver of success of all other organisms in the area. To produce the best crops, we need to have high quality soils. The food forest itself at New College is a relatively small area. You can see here the, a satellite photo of the Caples campus provided by Google Earth with the approximate area outlined. And the food forest was first planted in 2016, so it's about four years old, and it's maintained by the Council of Green Affairs through both paid student work and volunteers. Over the last four years, you can see that there have been some big changes in the food forest. It started as just a lawn, and now it has many different stories of plants all growing. But underground, what you cannot see in this photo is a similar incredible change has occurred in the soils. And the rather marginal soils of the lawn have become very rich in bursting with life. My overall question about the food forest and lawn areas was if the soils of the food forest were higher functioning than those in the lawn. I was curious if the soils of the food forest were better able to provide plants with the conditions that they needed to thrive. To help inform my answer to this research question, I formed three testable hypotheses about the soils. My first was 
that there was a greater increase in organic carbon, which is the type of carbon most accessible to plants and other organisms in the food forest and carbon farm than in the lawn across all strata of soil. Strata are the different layers of soil. My second hypothesis was that microbial activity was also higher in the food forest than it was in the lawn area. Microbes form symbiotic relationships with many plants and assist in nutrient access and uptake, which can help increase their overall growth rates. My final hypothesis was that the food forest has a higher yearly carbon budget than the lawn, meaning that the food forest both takes in more carbon through photosynthesis and releases more carbon through microbial activity every year than the lawn. So armed with these hypotheses, I set out into the field to take some measurements that would provide evidence to support or refute these hypotheses. So with my meter tape, I set up some transects in the lawn and in the food forest and use a coring device to take soil cores at regular intervals. And I divided the soil into different strata based on its depth. However, there was a difference between the food forest and the lawn because the food forest has had additional berm layers built up on top of the normal soil that was already there. So we can see that the food forest has slightly deeper soil overall than the lawn in this figure. Once I had the soil, I took them back to Dr. Oberly's lab. And you can see in the top photo with the jars, I measured the release of carbon dioxide from individual soil samples to determine the microbial activity. Once I had done that, I placed the samples in a furnace at 550 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, all of the organic carbon present in soils, the kind that's most accessible to other organisms and plants, burns away. So after I got the samples back out of the furnace several hours later, I was able to weigh them and determine how much carbon had been lost. This led me on to the results of my study. I found that there was a much greater increase in organic carbon in the food forest area than there was in the lawn. Importantly, the amount of carbon that the food forest gathered in the past two and a half years since measurements were taken increased every single strata you can see yellow green and blue all increased in the overall amount of organic carbon that they held but in the lawn one of the layers the yellow lower layer actually decreased in organic carbon overall this shows that the soils of the food forest are quite rich, and higher organic carbon in soil is associated with more productive agricultural areas. I also found that microbial activity was higher in the food forest than it was in the lawn, about four times higher in fact. These microbial partners as I mentioned earlier, are quite important in assisting plants to access the different nutrients that are present in soils. This upper layer that I measured is shared between both the lawn and the food forest, so it can serve as a direct comparison to the two different management styles applied when maintaining the lawn or maintaining the food forest. My final hypothesis was that the food forest has a higher yearly carbon budget. My results show that this is indeed true. The food forest gathers about 15 times as much carbon through photosynthesis as does the lawn, and it also releases about seven times as much carbon through microbial respiration than does the lawn. The food forest uses more carbon every year than the lawn area, 
but it also stores more of that carbon every year than the lawn area does. These results brought me on to my conclusions that, firstly, every layer of soil in the food forest has increased in organic carbon since measurements were taken in 2017. Secondly, was that the food forest demonstrated four times as much microbial activity. And thirdly, that the food forest can store 15 times as much carbon in its soil each year than compared to a lawn. So these were my final numbers that I got that kind of represent the food forest and its different habits and activities. Now that I had them, I was curious how they compared to some other sort of agricultural orchard system. I found a study about peach orchard in Italy and found that the peach orchard was able to store about four times as much carbon through photosynthesis as the food forest, while it released about five times as much carbon as the food forest. So it seems similar to the example with the food forest and the lawn that the peach orchard is once again both intaking more carbon dioxide and releasing more carbon dioxide each year than the food forest. I think that the food forest will show an increase in the amount of carbon that is able to sequester as it becomes older since right now it's only about four years old and is still considered a relatively young orchard. The final discussion about the results of everything that I found in my studies at the food forest show that food forest systems can sequester 15 times as much carbon as alternative popular land use types like lawns can. They can grow successfully in a small footprint. They don't need to cover several acres to make a big impact on the amount of carbon that they sequester. They are able to enhance wildlife habitat. The green spaces, as well as food products that they provide, are often utilized by migratory songbirds, reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates in the soil. They are able to provide a bounty of food to the people who live nearby and can come visit them. And all of these factors together are able to build the resilience of the community that food forests are built in. Finally, I just want to thank everybody for coming to my presentation. I would like to thank my thesis committee, as well as my funding sources, which were the Council of Green Affairs and the New College Foundation. And finally, thank you to all of my family and friends for their support over this long project.